All right, welcome back to Happy Hour with Heather and Guest, episode number 102. I'm that other dude, Andrew, clean shaven, other dude, Andrew, and as always, I'm joined by Heather. Hi. And today we're going to talk about uh, two bands. The first is a group called Dead Runes from Nashville, Tennessee, and the second is called Aura Layer, and they are from Greenville, South Carolina, so they're from not my neck of the woods, or as Chevy Chase said in Caddyshack, neck of the wave, wave of the, what brings you here? So, <laughs> uh, anyway, Heather, do you want to, you can, you can kick things off, we'll talk about dead runes. Sure. <clears throat> my that um looks like they have that they released a single from their full length album which is releasing on February 7th and I don't know how you found two bands that compared themselves to Mastodon and Tort <laughs> but you did <laughs> and these are very specific comparisons too which i i found very interesting i really like this song and it makes me think that this album is going to get a very positive response the vocals are great everything flows really well there's also some really cool stops and starts the guitar reminded me of some heavy metal bands that i really like but it doesn't completely take over and i at the the song i just um i enjoyed everything about it cool yeah dead uh dead runes reached out to us to see if we'd play their single um so the fact that they were similar to Oralayer in terms of who they compared themselves to just happened to be synchronicity you know, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's funny because on their band camp, like both of their band camps and the <laughs> and they uh there's the comparison on both their band camp pages and I I was blown away by that. Yeah, it, I, so um I honestly don't know how the so Dead Runes is from Nashville um and years ago uh, probably like four years ago, I interviewed a musician from Nashville named Patrick Nahoda, who fronts a band called Nahoda. Uh, and one of the interesting things we talked about was I assumed Nashville was, you know, going to be mostly country music. And he told me that there's a really burgeoning uh, metal scene in Nashville, um, which I guess I probably should have expected because it is a music city. So it doesn't, it, it's not going to pigeonhole itself, but I, it's always been interesting to hear. Um, like I, I'm, I can't believe I'm blanking on the name, but I interviewed a musician from Wyoming who told me about, um, so I guess all over Montana, it was Wyoming or Montana. And I apologize for confusing them because they're very separate places. But um, even you and I used to talk uh, about Chicago um, or the Illinois scene. Um, so anyway, Dead Runes contacted us. Um, their album, Raid Ho, as Heather mentioned, will be released on February 7th. Uh, there were two tracks I listened to, um, My Freya and Iron Song. Um, what was interesting, too, as you had mentioned, they, they said for fans of Mastodon and Torch, they also mentioned a band called The Sword, um, who is no longer together, but they'd put out a few albums. Um, and what's interesting is on The Sword's first album, they have a track called Freya, and they have a track called Iron Swan. So I, I found it interesting that, that uh, Dead Runes have tracks called My Freya and Iron Song, um, which don't say, I mean, they don't sound... Like, you're not going to listen to Dead Runes and be like, oh, well, they're a carbon copy of these bands. Um, 
but you can definitely hear the influence uh, on the music. And they had written on their band camp, um, Stoner Rock music from Mu- Stoner Rock from Music City, Nashville's Dead Ruins bring the frantic anxiety of Mastodon mixed with the chill majestic vibes of the sword. Head bangable dynamic fudge fuzz drenched rock and roll. So if you're in the mood for any of that stuff, um, their album will release next month. And I think uh it cer- I mean it certainly gets uh, a ringing endorsement from both of us, I would imagine. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but um, not as slow as some of the music we've recently listened to, uh, a little bit more up-tempo, but um, really great, unique. I mean, there you'll you'll listen to it and be like, oh, yeah, this, this reminds me of other bands, but this sounds like Dead Runes. Um, so that's cool. Um, and then uh, next up, if we... Um, stay in the South. We'll go to Greenville, South Carolina for Aura Layer. Um, and they just had an album released recently uh, called uh, Thousand Petals. So what did you think of Aura Layer? Yeah, and they released that in Ju- July, July 14th of uh, 23. And you know how in movies there is <laughs> someone that walks into a crowded bar and tries to cut through the crowd to get to the back. And you, you always see people, you know, trying to weave their way through the crowd. And there's a band playing and at the back of the bar on stage and to me this is that band so when you see that in movies and you see it a lot (laughs) to me this is the band this is the band that uh, should be playing uh, in that bar on that stage lit their their music playing you can hear it you can hear the people you know you know, in front of the stage, and then you can see people weaving their way through the crowd trying to make it to the back. So that's what that reminded me of when I listened to this. You know, the camera cuts to the band, and it's this band. (laughs) So, you know, this album, I think, should be submitted to a casting director. And they this music should be in movies. Um, this band is seriously legit. <laughs> They're label mates with Fairy Ring. And I saw that they did some shows together. They landed number three on the July Doom charts last year. Decibel Magazine had an exclusive listen of their album. They got a feature in Metal Sucks. And for good reason, the music is fast, it's loud, it sounds huge, and it's a lot of fun. It's exactly what I needed to listen to. And in the words of MC Hammer, they're too legit to quit. <laughs> nice. I haven't I haven't thought about him. So here's a bit of trivia for you and everyone else out there. When he was a kid. MC Hammer was a bat boy for the Oakland A's and he looked like Hank Aaron. So one of the players uh, called him Hammer because that was Hank Aaron's nickname, Hammer and Hank Aaron. So that's, he was just called Hammer. Um, And then that, I guess that's where he picked his stage name. So, but there's a great doc. So the, um, and I don't want to take too long on this tangent, the Oakland A's in the 70s won three World Series in a row. Um, and they did a documentary on HBO talking about them and the Raiders be, you know, being like powerhouse Oakland teams in the 70s. They interviewed MC Hammer, and you saw him. At one point, the manager of the A's held a contest to see who could grow. Like, I mean, he was crazy. He, he had a contest who could grow, you know, if you grew a mustache, he'd pay you like a hundred bucks or something. 
So it wasn't a contest. It was like an incentive. And that's how uh, Raleigh Fingers ended up with his trademark handlebar mustache because it was an incentive. Um, but there's a scene where he let Hammer and Hank, uh, Hammer and Hank, he let MC Hammer into the booth to broadcast when he was a little kid. <laughs> um, so there's, there's archived footage, uh, audio footage of them saying, so what do you think about, you know, the, about Catfish Hunter's pitching? And, and Hammer's like, well, I think he's doing a pretty good, you know, so it's worth checking out if you can find it. Um, but, uh, what, and I, and I just forgot why I brought all that up. That happens sometimes, <laughs> folks. I will go off on a tangent about something that Heather will remind me of and then forget why I brought it up in the first place. Cause, uh, I said they're too legit to quit. <laughs> oh yes. That's too legit, yes. Too legit. Too legit. And then of course the too legit. <laughs> Too legit. <laughs> yep, I remember. Um, yeah, it's funny. So years ago during COVID, when I was still doing a fistful of faceful, um, I went on YouTube to look for covers of the song Hybrid Moments by the Misfits. And Oralayer, there was a live performance of them covering Hybrid Moments. So... I talked, I put their music on a fistful of faceful and Jake from the band contacted me and asked uh, if he could talk to me about it. So on YouTube right now, there's a video from a few years ago with me interviewing Jake from Oralayer. Um, and at the time, I think they were recording their EP, which came out before this album that includes some of the songs that are on the album. Um, but they were about to start recording that. So I thought it would be cool to revisit them a few years later um, and see where they are. Uh, so yeah, they're from Greenville, South Carolina. And according to their band camp page, as Heather mentioned, blending the intensity of Mastodon with the bombastic tones of Torch or later takes these metal influences to a higher psychedelic realm. Instead of wandering the spirit world, Transcendence is expedited into pop-sized pieces of explosive rock energy. Um, so, yeah. The interesting thing, if you go back and watch the video of me talking with Jake, I compare them to a psychedelic version of the James Gang, which I don't think really works now that I listen to the new album. Um, I don't know what I was on then. Uh, but you'll notice I have what I like to think are Groucho Marx eyebrows. My eyebrows need to be trimmed. Or perhaps it's that I'm just so close to the screen. Either way, it's a good watch if you get the chance. Um, but this, I thought this was a great, someone named Scott Spears had wrote this on Bandcamp. If you like to live on the edge and have no regard for mindless compliance or conformity, this might just be the ticket. But I gotta warn you, or layers thousand petals is probably going to duke it out for album of the year at clean and sober stoner, maybe even the doom charts against the likes of hail the void fairy ring snake mother and acid king. Once you cross that line, it can be hard to go back. Um, so for me, when I listen to thousand petals, the song Christ antler, which I believe is the third track really stuck out to me. And I listened to it on repeat a couple times. Um, the, the structure of it was really cool, and the way they, they used melody in that song, um, I really dug. So uh, I would listen to it. And there, so that was good. And then there's a song, a track called You Walk, which has a tone that I was like, how, do they, how did they get that tone? Um, definitely worth checking out, uh, Thousand Petals. And I looked and saw that on the year end at Doom Charts, uh, of all the... Of the six so it didn't take three in july but it came in the year end at 26 so definitely worth checking out um the ep called solar plexus has three tracks that are on thousand pedals so you can just go directly do not pass go do not collect 200 dollars. just go directly to get thousand pedals um but yeah uh, uh, faster tempo music than some of the stuff we talked about recently, but just as good and really um, 
really great sort of stoner um, driven uh, music, I would say. Um, probably elements of some other stuff in there. But uh, I just figured it was worth, and it's all, it's funny. It's really funny now that I think about it. Like I hadn't noticed until you pointed it out that they both had similar influences um, or not influenced. Found, it's funny that they're influenced by some of the same bands, but they sound, <clears throat> they have two completely different sounds, oh, yeah, which I yeah. think is, was really that that was really interesting too yeah well and that they, they that they happened to be on the same episode but that wasn't intentional um so i guess the universe was like okay today you're going to talk about two bands that have mastodon as <laughs> the unifying thing mm -hmm. um, yeah which is just it just goes to show that if you're open to the universe cool things can happen yeah um but yeah, I would recommend check out Dead Runes, check out Oralayer. They're both um, relatively newer bands, but they're you're this is the first time you'll hear from the, about them probably, but it certainly won't be the last. So get in on the ground floor. That's my advice. Yeah, yeah, um, and it's nice nice to see you know. Um, you know, sometimes some bands are, you know, hanging up their hats and calling it a day. And then there's lots of new bands emerging. So it's kind of nice that, you know, new bands are coming on the scene. Absolutely. And what's great to know is that, like, these bands aren't coming out of L.A. or New York or other places that you'd think would have, you know, this is like, we got Greenville, South Carolina, and Nashville, Tennessee, um, which just leads me to believe that there's tons of pockets of great music being made all across the world. And sometimes, you know, thankfully the internet allows you to discover them um, like I did. I know that there are some great live performances from Oralayer that you can find on YouTube. I'm not so sure about Dead Runes, but... Um, it might be if you if you feel like spelunking down the YouTube rabbit hole, um, this wouldn't be a bad choice. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I got way, good no. way to spend good good way to spend a Sunday listening to some tunes from s some emerging bands coming on the scene. Absolutely. Sometimes you can just let the algorithm take you on a journey, and. Uh, if you're like me, that journey can be pretty eclectic and take you to places you wouldn't expect. But yeah. So next week we'll be back. It'll be Heather's turn in the rotation. Uh, I'm excited because your batting average is like unheard of. You'd be <laughs> Thank a, you. You'd be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Um, <laughs> you know. So yeah, I think. The last person to hit 400 was Ted Williams a long time ago. Um, I'm surprised that today has so many baseball references. I'm not really a baseball guy, but um, they're yeah. just coming. They're just coming to you. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, hitting 400 is unheard of. That's so out of every 10 at bats, you get four hits. You're getting like nine hits out of every 10 at bats, so you're hitting 900. <laughs> Yeah, well, this comes from a life, a lifetime, <laughs> literally a lifetime of listening to heavy music. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it pays, I mean, it's music. Uh, and then, okay, now I'll get a little bit more highbrow. The opening line of uh, Twelfth Night, I believe, one of the characters says, "If music be the food of love, play on." So I think that's what he says. Right now, well, I don't see, I don't, yeah, I'm guessing some of our fans are probably familiar with Shakespeare enough to be like, dude, way to misquote, made way to misquote Twelfth Night. <laughs> whatever. That's not how I, I'm not precise. I'm like, I'm like. We get the gist. You get, get the, the gist. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I yesterday when uh, um, I mentioned that Duncan Evans and I are going to talk uh, next month. But um, we'll still cover serious topics like where to get the best 3 a.m. curry 
and uh, the intricacies of the Lord Humongous. I could probably rattle off the Lord Humongous's speech to the survivors in the compound from Mad Max the Road Warrior, but I'd get some of the words wrong. Um, but I'd get the gist of what he's saying. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and so, so, you know, sometimes that's how we need. Sometimes you just need, yeah. I mean, you know what? I think that's the title. The good, that's going to be the title of one of my next books. Is going to be called <laughs> "The Gist of Humongous." <laughs> that's a good title. The yeah. Gist of Humongous. Yeah. Awesome. I like it. You get. Yeah, you got it. Well, I, I thank you for uh, inspiring me to come up with it. <laughs> all right. Well. Um, I guess all of you out there, go check out Oralea and Dead Runes. Tune in next week for Heather's turn uh, quarterbacking. And uh, we look forward to bringing you more reviews. <laughs>